Hello and welcome to the 2023 British BMX Hall of Fame. I'm Rich Eames, one of the hosts for the evening. We are here to celebrate the great and the good of BMX racing and freestyle over the years from the 1980s to the present day. We're looking forward to a superb evening of awards. Take a look, see what you think and see what all went down. The winner is... Winner is... Oh my God, super excited. <gasps> Jane Whittle! <laughs> my my mum and Robert said today, have you got a speech? And I said, well, no, not really. If I win, I win. But it all comes, it all comes from the heart, so I don't need a speech. I firstly said the reason why I really wanted to win this is for my dad, Mr. Hotshot, who I'm proud to wear his uh, jacket today. I was looking for a jacket to wear, and Robert said, well, why don't you just wear your dad's hot shot jacket? Because he will, it means, you know, he will always be with us. Because um, without him, I wouldn't have had this opportunity. I wanted to thank my mum, Mrs. Hotshot, who's at home. She's 86. And she said, oh, ring me. Just let me know how you get on. So, um, and she remembers everything from the BMX days. Um, I just wanted to thank... All the hotshot riders out there from all over the world. I know we've got some hotshot riders here from Southern Ireland, which was just so amazing. Um, you know, my dad's legacy was, you know, he saw hot, he sh saw BMX, um, and he just, you know, in the early 80s, and he just knew it was a winner, and you know, he just took it from strength to strength. And we've had one of the most fantastic experiences, the, the top teams, you know, Geth Shooter, sorry that Kellogg's is just, you know, one to die for. So I wanted to thank my mum who's really supported me. I wanted to thank my brother because I always used to have to beg him to change my chain rings. He was so grumpy. I said, I need a different chain ring. Um, I wanted to thank Robert, my husband, Robert Cardoza, who meeting him, you know, after all these years of being apart, he got me back into the BMX bug and it just seemed really amazing to be on the sidelines cheering for him. Um, I mean, I, I, as I say, if it wasn't for my dad who, whose legacy, you know, lives on today, we're trying to get the hotshot, you know, team back. We've got several riders. We've got Sarah Jane's got the, the shirt. And her mum, of course, uh, Linda. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had a, such a wonderful time. I went to a... My dad sent me to one of the top private girls' school, you know, in Oxford. And he always used to... I used to say to the girls, oh, at school, oh, what are you doing this weekend? And they said, oh, we're going to play polo, you know, with our mummy and we're going to, you know... I said, oh, I'm riding BMX with the boys. Oh, they would say, oh, with the boys. Um, so I had some wonderful experiences. And I think everybody in this room, I think we're all related to each other because we've got, you know, BMX in our blood. It's in our DNA. It keeps us young. And I just want to thank everybody for, for nominating me, voting for me. And as I say, this is for my dad. <laughs> Les, Les Windle, hot shot. Thank you. Well, it's not you, Charlie, I'm afraid. Oh, right. so, again, right, go on. Right, the pioneer, Pete Middleton. Yeah! Um, <laughs> bit, bit of a surprise, but I'm not going to lie. Um, I thought my chance had gone. Last year, and they was given to some northern monkey, some gingerbread geezer. That, uh, but um, no, nah, uh, mate, uh, wow. I, uh, <laughs> I, to say I'm surprised is an understatement. I didn't think this was going to happen, uh, and I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's it's um, pioneer racer. Think about what it says. And, and last year, I thought that that the. The, uh, being part of that um, beginning of BMX and winning that first organised event, I thought that was me. I, I would be part. I, I would get that, and I would get inducted. 
And I missed it. And, and listen, no disrespect, Alan deserved, 100% he deserved it. Um, but yeah, being part of this and, and getting this is just it's taking me aback, I'm not going to lie. Um, a little bit about the history of it. How much time have I got? <laughs> I've got no speech. I've got no speech, so everything I say is going to be off the cuff. But um, a little bit about the history of BMX. There's, like this, this for me goes back to winning that first ever organised event. After that, I took a bit of a break, and to be fair, um, BMX was, you know, we got to thank one man for bringing BMX to what it is we know and love today. Um, Single-handedly brought BMX to what it is and was Andy Ruffle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and that's quite poignant because that will, that, you know, that, 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 that's, that's true in its word. That man come and knocked on my door after I'd stopped racing. I'd went, been, out, I'd been out, won a few races, and, and I'd stopped. And that man come and knocked on my door. Well, that kid come and knocked on my door and said, Mongoose, want you to ride for him. Um, and it just, it, my life changed. As I said last year, when Sue and Malcolm got their award, I owe so much to those two guys because they changed my life. A scruffy little kid from East London. And they changed my life. They really did. I went all over the world, met some amazing people, um, did some amazing things. Um, I can't stop looking at this. <laughs> I cannot stop looking at this. Uh, it's, it, it is amazing. And, I, and Geff knows that this is a very elite club. And, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. It's unbelievable. And it's so, there, there are so many people to thank. I've just probably... I should, have, I should have thought of something to say, but I didn't. But yeah, Sue and Malcolm was, was such an inspiration to me and, and everything we did in our, in our BMX lives. And I'm really proud. Yay! I'm really proud to be standing here holding this now. I really am. There are, if I, a, a couple of things about what this means and what this is. And, and you know, last year was the first one. This one, this is, you know, this is the second one. This will grow arms and legs. We need to spread the word. We're a family. John Nicholson said last year when we presented our award, this is a family, and we need to spread the word. This needs to grow. This, it, okay, we might change the way it works, but there is so much history in this room. There's so much history around BMX, and we need to keep it going. We need to keep recognising everything everybody has done for this sport and, and how it has grown and gone on. Yes, it's a different sport today than what it was, but it's still, it's still BMX. Um, and there's so, I, I mean, I could just go on forever. There's so many people that, that you know, have had an influence on me and what we've done. But, you know, first of all, if I can get you all to put your hands together for the likes of Dal, Mike, Darren, and all the guys that have put so much time into this to make this work, it's amazing. It is amazing. And they, they, they certainly deserve as much recognition as anybody else. But... Yeah, really proud, unbelievably proud to have this, and, and yeah, much appreciated. And I would like to say one thing, and Jane touched on it as well. We've, we've lost a few really important people in our lives, and one thing that gets forgotten is, if it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't be standing here now. My, my, my dad took me and a number of riders all around the country when we were riding for Ace, all over the place. And if it's, uh, if it's all right with you guys, I will dedicate this to my dad as well. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, guys. Much appreciated. And the winner is Lee Reynolds! What's up, everybody? Wow, what, a, what an honour, what an honour. And shout-outs to Neil Ruffle, the, the inductee for last year. And I'm just, like, so honoured. It's been such a crazy ride. And... Uh, I, I moved to the US in 1988 to pursue my BMX career. I was sponsored by Hutch. Shout outs to Jeff Catlow. He was my team manager. E-Frame's here. He was one of the team riders. And uh, uh, that connection with Hutch got me to the US. Um, I, my, uh, after my first contest in the US, I got kicked off of Hutch for partying too hard. And then I got sponsored by Haro. And I went on tour with them in the summer of 89. And, and then at the end of 89, I completely destroyed my ankle. I went off the side of the ramp. And it took me about a year to recover. And at that point, the BMX industry had just totally slumped out. So 
I uh, actually made a living doing uh, school shows for a few years. And then I, I still worked in the BMX industry. I actually designed Fox's BMX and mountain bike line for a few years. For Dave, I, I did like a lot of stuff with Dave Mira. And now I'm a DJ. And I still ride occasionally, much to my family's dismay. And I can't thank everybody that I've met and all the people that helped me, but I would like to thank my mom and dad. They're over there. They like, really helped me out. Like taking me to, like, I actually like raced. I, I got into BMX in 1980. I, uh, some of my friends had some Team Murrays and then uh, they helped me get a Diamondback Silver Streak, which was a huge investment for us. It was like 225 pounds. I remember we went over to Bristol to get it. I was living in Monmouth at the time, uh, racing BMX. I, I finally won my first BMX race, like regional at Ross on White BMX track when I was about 16. And then they had a freestyle contest in the parking lot, which I, I won. And then that was the last race I ever ended. I really just loved like doing shows and entertaining people, which uh, like set me up for what I do now. I'm a DJ basically, and I just love like I just love entertaining people and like seeing people smile and like bringing people together. And like the most amazing thing actually about BMX is the people, the connections that I made, and the people that I know, like, all over the world, and like, I'm still friends with, and, like, keep in touch with, you know, and, uh, yeah, that's about it, really, I mean, thank you, that's, I'm stoked, and, like, super honored. Yeah, and the winner is? The Higginson family. Yeah. The Higginson family! <laughs> wow, thanks very much. It's amazing how young my mum and dad look there. <laughs> It's really weird, uh, sort of thinking back, 1979, Don Smith uh, tried to uh, get hold of me at a, a motocross event and uh, persuade me that we should launch a BMX magazine. So I actually saw the first one out there, BMX News, which was inserted into Trials of Motocross News back in, I think, 1979 sometime. So it really does take you back. We then did 13 issues of BMX News, and I remember getting hauled into the office of Bill Lawless, who was the, the, the head honcho there, and he said to me, uh, sorry, Shag, um, but we're closing the magazine, the newspaper down, and uh, you're losing your job with it, uh, which was a bit of a shock at the time. Um, thanks to my dad, who lent me some money, um, we actually started BMX Weekly. We did a, a few issues of that, um, and soon realized that actually people wanted color um, magazines, not newspapers. So we launched, well, we had to print 15,000 of the first issue, and we only had orders for 6,000, so it was a bit scary. Um, we certainly didn't have enough money to do, or time, or whatever, to do it every week, so we launched it as a bi-weekly, um, which seemed odd, but um, there you go. Um, but it quickly became, I think, one of the biggest selling boys' magazines in the country. Um, and that's thanks to you guys, because basically we were just featuring you and you guys made the, the sort of headlines and were what sold the magazine, so thanks very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, we then launched Freestyle BMX, so we had three magazines going. But I think more importantly, and I think Pete mentioned this before, and I think Jonathan mentioned it last year, it's all down to family, and this is a massive BMX family. And I think if it wasn't for my dad having the confidence... Um, in me or blind faith or stupidity or whatever it was, maybe a mixture of all of the above, then we certainly wouldn't um, have launched the magazine and we wouldn't be up here today. So I don't know where Jonathan's gone. Do you want to say a few words, Jonathan? I think the strangest thing when you're a kid is just want to see yourself in a newspaper or a magazine. And every parent wants to see their child in print of some description. And some of the best pictures are not actually the racing pictures. The most iconic can be the signing of an autograph or meeting fans or doing something completely different. And the most iconic picture for me is the Worlds in Slaghauer in 1983, where Greg Hill and Stu Thompson crashed out 
And just as they're riding off together, Nigel, my brother, gets that picture for the magazine, parting shot. So it's not the actual racing, it's the, it's, it's the most bizarre shots in time. And that for me is the most iconic picture of all my BMX time. And it just, just prints it there that it's not always about the racing. And the other picture for me is Charlie and Geth on the Dolly Partons. That is the ultimate. And that to me was taking it to the next chapter of BMX. And again, Charlie and Geth were the only two riders that really overtook me and knocked me down the rankings. And I'm quite happy to say you well deserved it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you know, yet again, we stand here and we've lost many over this last 12 months um, in the BMX fraternity and the family. So let's have a look at a little video and remember those who have left us over this last 12 months. Jerry Galley, wow. Well, um, yeah, it's uh, an honour to collect this. Um, oh, just looking at the, the names on there, and we, it could have been any one of them, but it's no surprise it is Jerry. Bit of a surprise that I was here to collect it. Yeah, I do go back a long way with Jerry. I was in Bennett tonight. I was coming to uh, collect this award for, for the winner. And yeah, it just so happens to be Jerry. And um, as you can see, it, like I say, it's no surprise. And Ephraim, you could certainly second that, couldn't you? From... Jerry Galley did a trick on Flatlands called a decade. Pretty much most people can do one. Jerry, when well, the first time I met him was unsponsored in a pair of jeans, scruffy as you like, did a triple decade. I was blown away. Took me another 20 years to be able to do a triple decade. So shout out to Jerry. Also, Blessed, like I just said, with one of the best styles in the game, for sure, which is a rare thing. I mean, I'll go back a long way with, with Jerry. There's probably people that were close to Jerry, but I mean, my first time meeting Jerry was going back to the UK BFA competitions, uh, especially the King of Concrete. And he was somebody I always found was very humble. And he would be somebody, I would say, you know, he, he wouldn't want all the publicity, but as you can see on the videos, yeah, he just absolutely killed it. Um, <clears throat> always had a lot of time for Jerry and so did he. He used to come up to Birmingham, uh, he used to ride over in Bearwood, he used to ride our park at uh, Redditch as well. And yeah, he was, he was always good to meet up and hang around with Jerry. And yeah, he just used to push many boundaries and then like what Ephraim says, he had a fantastic style. Um, and one thing I will do, I will make sure Jerry gets hold of this.
And the winner is the one, the only, Tom Lynch. Yeah. Very kind. Uh, I think what resonates with me is we're all connected in this BMX family. This is my brother that came all the way from America tonight. Now, um, the, the funny thing here is, I hope you like our jackets. The funny thing here is, I couldn't ride a bike, but he made me ride his rally chipper for miles and miles and miles. So it was black and blue. So thank you, Martin, for giving me the freedom. And I think that's what gave a, a lot of us who are young kids was the freedom to get out there on two wheels. Uh, and really experienced life, so that's, that's really nice. Um, the racing was great, I've got to admit. Uh, I can't believe being up here against, uh, or to be inducted against all those other nominees. I've raced all of them except for Dylan. We used to stop and watch Dylan when he was a kid, when we were doing the super class. I banged elbows with all of those other guys, and hopefully they will be inducted at some point, which is wonderful. A lot of respect for the, the class that I raced against. Uh, I think that was 15 expert, 14 expert, Stu Diggins, the pioneer over there. Big shout out. Um, and it really made us phenomenal racers, I've got to admit, because we had uh, people to look up to, our role models from Ruffle and March and all the other pros in the room, like Pete Middleton, etc., etc., Mark Salisbury, so many names, so many names to mention. They really did give us something to aim for. Uh, and one of those people was Guest Shooter right over there uh, on the same team. Uh, for Team Hot Shot with Jane Windle over there uh, and the whole Hot Shot outfit. I could probably go all night. But one of the things I've got to say is for people to give us the opportunity to ride bikes and do really cool stuff together. Um, the best moments I've probably had was with my family. A big shout out to my mum and dad and the rest of my family. We wouldn't be in the room, I suppose a lot of us, if it wasn't for our parents uh, and you could say our guardians for taking us places. But when we could get mobile, and get our own wheels, we became a bit different. Um, hence the LRP table over there. Uh, and we traveled and went around Europe and done really good stuff, which is just wonderful. So I can't believe I'm up here doing this because I haven't got a speech. The phenomenal people on that list uh, were, were are wonderful to race against and, and great, great competitors. Um, and I think that's what really uh, helped me throughout my career leaving BMX racing and going to the ambulance service where, do you know what, I had set goals. There was no boundaries really because the BMX family and BMX people we raced against uh, could put us in a position to really achieve anything. So, and that really is a thank you to all the people involved in the sport of BMX, the fans, the supporters, and our coaches that are unsaid, people like John Stockwell and others, to really invest in time in us as people uh, to go and do good things. So, in a sense, we got set up for life, uh, for a lot of these different schools, and um, we're here today to prove it. Um, I was very happy to see the Gilmore family over there from Ireland. Uh, I want to stay with them. There's so many connections in the room, and I love you all, and I think this is wonderful. And it was a surprise, even though friends of ours are involved in this, which is wonderful. Big shout out to Dazza over there. Uh, Darren Neal, dear Holmes, Matt Wong, uh, and Clive is not with us tonight, but he's with us in spirit. And I love hearing Paul Roberts, which is a blast of the past. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful BMX forever. So who do we have? We have Luli Adiemma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I've had 24 hours on the flight from Sydney to prepare a speech. So you, you think I'd have something good to say, but like up here this evening and seeing everyone tonight, I cannot tell you. Uh, how joyful, joyful doesn't even cut it. This is amazing, but you know, I want to say a few things because that we've mentioned family a lot tonight, but for me, BMX is always about community. Uh, and when I think about, you mentioned New Newark Cavaliers, I want to thank Newark Council. If they'd never bought, you know, they built a track at Newark, 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 Newark on Trent, which gave me the opportunity to try and race a bike. But if it hadn't have been for the community, unfortunately, the Newark Cavaliers aren't here this evening, but Dal Pointing, thank you, because you're the one that took me to my first race. The Edwards family, that used to take me to all the international races. Uh, and it was about community that made it all happen. But I'd forgotten about BMX. I think I retired officially 1990, maybe. And I hadn't really thought about BMX until this man here uh, reached out to me 
last year uh, to say that someone was writing a book to acknowledge, to acknowledge uh, black, black cyclists in sport, and I needed to speak to them. Uh, and then through that and the British BMX Hall of Fame, thank you very much, I started to delve back into the history. And then I saw that people that I raced against in the 80s and 90s, Mandy Hemstock, thank you very much. Oh, Mandy's racing! Like, <laughs> uh, and then more recently this year, Sarah Jane Nichols. So this year, I thought, I, you know, we do on New Year's resolution type sort of thing. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to have a crack at this BMX thing again. Uh, so I bought a bike in April, thought I was all that in a bag of chips. I won my first five races, race number six on the same day, fell off and broke my ankle. Uh, so, 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 so what I've learned is, in your 50s, you think you're all that in a bag of chips, but you don't bounce anymore. So when you hit the ground, you stay on the ground. But the same thing, I'm in Sydney, I'm in Australia, uh, but the community thing is what still exists, and what make, that's where the magic happens. So we were talking earlier, I can't believe BMX is not the number one sport in the world, because there's nothing brings people together like we bring people together. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> British BMX Hall of Fame, thank you for making me young again. I feel like a kid. The body says no, the mind said yes, and the heart says hell yes. Uh, so thank you very much, and I hope I'll see you all later. I will win the World Championships again, uh, and I'll thank you all for it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jim Dirt, Keith Dooley. Wow. To be honest, I'd rather talk about Tom Lynch versus Team Amev, because all I've got is the time I crashed and got 48 stitches in my ball bag once. So, um, um, thank you to Darren and the organisers. I'm absolutely humbled. This is amazing. Some of the images there were from the late 80s through the 90s, and that was an era where um, the riders started to reclaim um, BMX, I, I, I feel, running their own events, running their own companies. Um, shaping BMX and BMX is always evolving. It keeps a need. It keeps needing to evolve So I think a good message for the youngsters out there um, Is that it's it's down to them to move BMX to the next chapter, you know yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think I want to dedicate this award to all the youngsters out all the young and hungry BMXers out there who who maybe um, who maybe don't fit the traditional mold, maybe haven't got the Olympics as their dream, maybe they're not chasing rankings or championships, but they're riding their own, their own destiny, their own pathway, they're doing their own thing. And I think that's really soulful, and I think we should really encourage that, that part of our sport. I'm glad you're cheering, because it gives me a little bit of a chance to think about the next thing I'm going to say. But, um, uh, I think we should all celebrate. We should come down to Bexhill and Hastings, my, my, my manor. Come and ride the Source Park in Hastings, just right by Hastings Pier, Boyley, Jump Park, uh, Jump Park, home of Jump Club. Come and visit us, Ricky Rats Woods. Grab a pie. Carl, bring the LRP. I'll call the GI5 and the HLP. And, uh, Keith and uh, Bobby can bring down Region 9, Region 11. Team Sano can come down and we'll have a party. But, um, I just want to say a, a huge thank you to Darren and the organisers. I know you put your heart and soul into this, and that's what BMX is all about for me. Thank you. And the winner is Phil Townsend. 30 seconds ago, I was sitting down there waiting to clap one of the many deserved people. Who put my name down? I mean, it, it's not what happens to people, you know? Anyway, I'd, I'd like to thank two, two people. Why well, don't one group, all of you, because there'd be absolutely no point. There'd be no point in organising an event if it wasn't for the riders turning up and making it the event that they are. I think I've lost count of the number of events I've been involved with, but I mean all the way through. But it's always the riders and their parents that bring them along that actually make the event. It's not necessarily the organisers, they're the ones that, uh, okay, we do a bit of work in the background, but you make it work. Thank you. Okay, the second person I'd like to thank, and this is a little bit weird, 
because we, we've heard about the parents taking their kids around. I'd like to thank my son, because it wasn't, if it wasn't for him getting involved or wanting to get involved in BMX, remember he was, what, four and a bit, five? He was emulating Barry Sheen, because I thought I was going to be Mike Howard. I was running around on my BSA Bantam on around Snetterton. He wanted to go BMXing, and it changed our lives. It gave us all of you. So thank you. Thank you to the organisers of this event, because I, I know what it takes to put something like this on. But again, it's because you've turned up that makes them want to do it again. See you all next year. Well, all okay. right. Is a really good friend of mine, Mr. Jeff Catler. He was actually my team manager on Hush. Jeff, get up here. Unfortunately, my speech has already been given by Phil Townsend, um, which is a bit of a bummer. But I do echo everything he said. All the competitions I've ever been involved with, King of Concrete, the Worlds, all the BFA competitions, it's the riders in the end that make it. We just push paper about and walk about a lot. We don't get on a bike. They put their knees, backs, necks on the line and give us some fantastic entertainment and scares. Uh, Lee Reynolds being one of them. Uh, and there are too many to mention. But again, Phil, I've got to thank my son, just like you did. Ephraim, if he wasn't for you, it's your fault. This is why I'm here. Why did you do this to me? But thank you anyway. I pay tribute to you and your enthusiasm and obsession. And everybody else, it is a community as much as a family. And we all bring each other together and the riders make it in the end. Thank you. I suppose about a few, say a few words. Um, well, it is a bit of a shock, I must admit. Um, I've got my beautiful family here with me tonight. And like every, everyone says it. As Phil before him and Mr. Catlow, if I wouldn't be here without these guys. And most importantly, I've got one girl here tonight. It was the first one I ever started to take racing, Trisha, back in 1980. And she's here supporting me. And uh, so this means a lot, and it means a lot because, like everyone said here tonight, all you guys that have been racing all these years, it kind of keeps us older ones going and the parents going. And... Um, it's been unbelievable. I'm coming to the end of it. I'm starting to step back a bit, but it's been an unbelievable journey. I know that word gets used a lot, but I've had the best of lives being with all you guys and uh, through 40 plus years of BMX. And um, I want to thank you, all of you, from the bottom of my heart. Thanks a lot. And... Uh, Thank you, Darren Reedy. And uh, thank you, Gev Shooter. Thank you, everybody that I've had the pleasure of witnessing ride a BMX track. Dylan Clayton's not here tonight, but there are so many. And it's been an absolute pleasure to be standing beside the track and watching all these great legends that are here tonight riding. Thank you very, very much. Have a good night, everyone. That pretty much wraps the awards up, but, but, we have one more sneaky award to slip in. <laughs> Don't be rude. <laughs> and because this person is here, we feel like we've got to get this award out to him. It's a he, I've given that away so far. But I would like to invite up onto the stage, Craig Schofield and Pete Middleton. We are going to present the second, the David Moore Lifetime Achievement Award. 
So we're going to have two David Moore Lifetime Achievement Awards. Craig Schofield and Pete Middleton onto the stage. Yeah, when, when I won that first race and it all started kicking off and I said that, you know, then one man came along and, and made BMX into what it was, he did. He absolutely did. He, he just pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. And in my, in my honest, humble opinion, there is a very few people that will or are entitled to sit at the top table of our BMX family. A very few. Very few. And this man, very few. this man is absolutely, definitely one of them. And I, I mean, this, this, this goes without saying that he, Andy Ruffle, he's get your ass up here and grab this. Okay, it's a little unfair. I wasn't expecting it. I've had a little bit too much to drink. Uh, yeah, we all have. Yeah, yeah. Hi, so I'm not sure what I, where I start with this thing. I mean, genuinely, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I thought the rule was, Dale, that me and Tim Marsh wasn't going to be put in this damn thing. <laughs> right, and Tim is... Tim! Tim! Oh, Tim! Oh! Oh, I'll get in trouble for that. Wow, so... Um, Thank you, darling. Um, but yeah, so this is a bit weird. Okay, so I'm not prepared at all. And loads of people, loads of people say that, don't they, when they come up. I literally don't know what I'm going to say. But listen, here's, here's the reality, and, and I'm, so, I'm so proud of this. Um, when, it, when it all started, and actually there's, there's a lot of connections with us two. I guess that's why you're up here presenting me with, with this. And it's, it's like there's lots of connections. So... When, uh, when we first met, I guess it was 80. 1980, Val and Dave are here, yeah. uh, Craig's parents, yeah. right? And, I and I'll, I'll never forget, without these guys, I wouldn't have got to BMX races in the early days. Yeah. You know, because things were a little tough then um, to get around. And, you know, so thank you, Val and Dave. Yeah. I mean, I, I, obviously, there's a lot of people I need to thank. I mean, I, you know, I have had a, a fairly good career, I guess, back in the old days. Um, and I guess the thing is that what it taught me was about life, because I went on to do... There was a couple of things missing, by the way, from the, uh, the intro thing there. Um, but I never forget that what it, ga it gave me the confidence to do, and I think Lee Reynolds is here. Lee, love you, buddy. Lee... Lee will remember the whole shot, Evan. Oh. Right? And I did the first one, I think, in 1983. Someone will correct me, but I think it was 83 or 84. And I called it the British Freestyle Championships. And then I changed the name to basically the, the Olympics of Extreme. And this is a true story, right? So I called it the Olympics of Extreme, and I sent a proposal to ABC in the States. And, I, and as you guys will all realize, especially Lee, it became the X Games. Woo! Woo! And it, but it's not like I got credit for that, but, it, but that's what BMX teaches you, right? It teaches you to win, teaches you to think big, teaches you to just go for it, right? And I can, some of the girlfriends I've had, it definitely works. But I think, you know, that taught me a big lesson, and then it, that became the whole shot event, which was basically BMXs and skaters. And it taught me a lot about negotiating, too. I remember when I did the second or third whole shot event, I brought over a lot of skaters. Christian Azoy, um, a lot of amazing skaters. And I remember we were three quarters of the way through the whole shot event. It must have been 87, I guess. And it was all great. The crowd was going crazy. We sold out. It was like brilliant. I thought, wow, I'll have a career when I can't win BMX races. Or do front ops and back ops. But, but not wheelies. Oh, but not wheelies. But not wheelies. No wheelies. I actually did my first wheelie about, what, two weeks ago. That's, that's a true story. True story. On a mountain bike, though. But anyway, so the thing is, with this whole shot thing, talk me about negotiations. I mean, I... 
I guess I'm going to have to mention the names now, but basically, all the skaters that are, you know, brought over from the States, they were just about to go on and do their big performance on this damn halfpipe that took three weeks to put into the Sobo Center. Um, before they go on, no one can find them. I'm sitting in the back office, and then they all arrive and basically say, we think you've done really well with this event. Okay, I did. It was sold out. It was amazing. Uh, so we're not going on unless you renegotiate. So I renegotiated. And the best part of a deal is when both parties are a little bit pissed off, right? The next morning, we had to do something on Saturday Superstore, I think it was. Um, or was it? No. This happened. Anyway, long story. I must admit, I'm not, I should have thought about all this if I'd have known. Swap shop. No, Saturday Superstore. I'm just, I'm just it was Saturday Superstore. <laughs> Keith Chagwin. No, it wasn't that. Anyway, so cut a long story short. So one of these skaters, I won't mention who it is, but this is all part of the learning process, right? And BMX helped me learn this. So one of the skaters, we're live on TV on the BBC, and to get me back for not getting everything they wanted in the negotiation, a certain skater jumped on his skateboard and went like that, about 200 miles an hour. Launched his board, and we'd just gone live. And I'm co-hosting this piece. So he fires the skateboard at 200 miles an hour and hits my co-presenter in the ankles. And that can do some damage, at, you know, really, really pushed it. Anyway, so here I am on live television with all these skaters, and there's an ambulance, and, I, and, I have, and they keep telling me in, in your ear thing, get out of the way, there's a bloody ambulance behind you, he's got to pick us, I'm like, right? So, and that's live, we've got it on tape, actually. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that BMX didn't just teach me to race. It taught me how to make another family, and that's all of you guys. These guys, it's Val and Dave, it's everyone that helps you along the way. Taught me that. It also taught me that you can do anything. The amount of effort you put into winning a BMX race, if you take that and put it into something else, like Lee Reynolds, one of the best DJs in the world, go Lee! Right? This is what's valuable about the sport of BMX. So, that I, I, honestly, I would have gone on for a long time if I'd have known I was going to get this thing. But, you know, I just want to say... Yeah, I would have gone on longer. <laughs> yeah. And there would have been loads of, loads of stuff I could tell you. But I think the more important thing is that we're all together. You know, it's the second year of this event. We've got to keep it growing. But I want to thank everybody. I want to thank my mum and dad. I want to thank my brother, Neil. Yeah. Miss you, Neil. I want to thank everybody from Malcolm Jarvis, who had real faith in me in the early days. I want to thank everybody, even, even Rally. I had one of the best years of my life on the Rally team in 1985. Admittedly, they paid me to have the best year of my life on, on Rally. But it's really cool, there's a lot of Andy Ruffle team specials still floating about. And we sold 100,000 of those damn things. Which you got money for. Which I got money for. So I'm really proud of that. But so to finish up, I want to thank everybody for this. Thank you, Dale and Darren and everybody on the Hall of Fame team. And thank all of you. I love you. And let's have a drink and get trashed. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, it is about that time that draws the end to 2023 British BMX Hall of Fame. As everybody has already said already, we don't need to say it. It was our wrap up, but they've wrapped up for us. Thank you all for coming. We'll hope to see you all next year. As Andy said, let's go and get trashed in the bar. Why not? Thank you, guys. On behalf of, my, on behalf of myself and Neil, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much. We will see you in 2024 for more of the same, but bigger and better.